Welcome to Split Second! If you want to buy the best sleeves or other magic-related accessories, head down to Dragon Shield using the affiliate link below. Hello everyone! This week, Bob brought his updated Jeska Timna Midrangey combo build. Josh is on his Tasher combo and slightly more taxi build than common. Elder wanted to try out the new food chain hype, Etali Primal Conqueror. And as a guest and friend, we have Afonso, quite known for his latest results on his time list. That's right, a blueless pot. Bal is going first and he kept his first hand. Sunbait Canyon and Blood Creep for lands, with a Chrome Mox and Simian Spirit Kite for ramp. He can start with Esper Sentinel and draw some cards, or even go deep for a turn 1 Timna if he so likes. Imperial Recruiter can find him almost everything in his deck, and that Pyroblast, well, that will be exiled under that Chrome Box for sure. Josh Mulligan once and found quite a fast hand. Inventor's Fair and Command Beacon for lands, both colorless, but he has Lotus Petal for color ramp and Soul Ring as well. Conjurer's Bobble for some recurrent loops, while your Melissa is the finisher of his infinite mana loops, and Dranith Magistrate is a great stacks piece that can hit play on turn 1 if he so wishes. Elder kept his first 7 quite happy with his scavenging ooze to stop 2, possibly all 3 players at the table. A lucky gemstone caverns, Urza Saga, Yavimaya Cradle of Growth, and Rosage who endures for lands. Arbor Elf and Delighted Halfling we will ensure he's not missing mana to keep feeding the Skus and cast Itali quite early. Finally, Afonso kept his first 7 and quite a decent one. Savannah and Bayou for lands. Jewel Lotus helps ramp up to Tyam, however, he will want to set up first. Strangler Roost Geist is a combo piece. He could use a sack outlet, but he's fine with slowing the game down through Drenit Magistrate and Mangle Horn. Crop Rotation can find him Cradle for more mana or Centaur Garden in case he finds himself a devoted druid. Before we get into the game, we would like to remind you that this year the European community is coming together to organize a CDH European Championship, culminating on a huge tournament in Lisbon by the end of the year. But that's not all. Partnering with us European, our fellows at Chaos are promoting the Pantheon series. On the first Sunday of each month throughout the year, there will be an online tournament held at European-friendly schedules. So you can try to battle for prizes, as well as accumulate points that will give the best players by the end of the season access to the European Championship Finals in Lisbon. Find more information in the video description below, and come join us February 4th to start the Pantheon season. Now, ready for the match? Before the game starts, Elder announces his Gemstone Caverns, exiling his Buzajo. Valden starts his turn with his Unbaked Canyon, and casts a Chromox. He imprints his useless Pyroblast and follows that with an Esper Sentinel passing the turn. Josh plays an Inventor's Fair and casts a Sol Ring. Sentinel triggers and he can't pay. He then casts a Lotus Petal to follow that into a Drenith Magistrate. He still casts a Conjurer's Bubble and passes. Elder plays a Yavimaya Cradle of Growth and casts an Arbor Elf. He also casts the Lighted Alfling and ends his turn. Afonso begins with a Jewel Lotus, Trinity Sentinel, and unable to pay. He plays a Savannah and casts a Hex Drinker, shipping it to Baal. Baal shocks himself a Blood Crypt, and incapable of casting Timna, he exiles Simeon Spirit Guide for Red to help cast Imperial Recruiter. He searches for a Sarah Ascendant that he also casts, ending his turn. Josh gets to his turn and cracks the Conjurer's Bobble, hoping to find some planes, but still nothing. He chooses not to put the petal in the bottom and he plays a Command Beacon. He then taps out for a Walking Ballista X equals 2. With the new police on the board, we are back to Elder. He plays an Urza Saga, entering and gaining its first ability. He then casts a Scavenging Ooze and passes. Afonso draws, plays a Bayou and casts a Strangle Root Geist, since his own Dranith doesn't do much while Josh is out of white mana and has Beacon in play. We're back to Ball. He jumps to combat, and a bit unsure who to eat, he attacks Josh, since Ballista and Drenith are preventing him a lot from progressing his game plan. With nothing else to do, Josh gets to his turn. He draws and plays a high market. Quite unfortunate that he's eating all his colorless, but still key lands from this deck. So he just passes with open mana. Elder draws and his sag gains its second ability. He plays a City of Brass and also passes. Afonso draws, plays a Marsh Flats and cracks it for his scrubland. He then levels up Hexringer once, then twice, and then thrice. But now, Bob responds to this with a Fire Covenant, paying a total of 10 life, killing Elder's Dorks, both of Afonso's creatures, Drenith, and just two pings on Walking Ballista. This way, he's allowed to cast Timna above the 30 life threshold, and if Josh wants to kill the Skus, he needs to pump Ballista once, ping it twice, and then Ballista dies after the Covenant resolution. However, despite Skus stopping Josh a lot, he prefers to have it alive, over killing Skus, so he just sacrifices Drenith to high market, gaining one life, and then activates Ballista, putting a counter on it. Elder floats 2 mana, and then Fire Covenant resolves. Strangle Root and Dying triggers, and Elder responds to it by exiling it with Skus. Before mana empties from Elder's pool, he activates Urza Saga to create a construct, and Afonso suddenly passes. 
Baldross and with the Ballista still alive, he doesn't want to bring out Timna. He attacks Elder for 6 in the air and on his second main phase he casts a Skyclave Apparition, entering play and targeting Walking Ballista. In response though, just removes a counter from it, to ping Esper Sentinel and then removes the other two to ping Skyclave itself, knowing he will get nothing in response. Ballista ends up not being exiled, which is what Joss wanted, at least for now, as Kuz is quite hungry. We're on Joss's turn now. He's still not fighting planes, but he found a Timna blocker, in the form of Hyraxima Walker. He also gets a Flying Blocker, a Junk Diver, and then passes. In the end step, Elder activates Kuz to exile Walking Ballista, and while Josh could sacrifice Junk Diver to High Market to get it back, Elder still has mana to activate it again, so he lets his Ballista bite the dust, as well as Drenith that goes just after through another Kuz activation. Elder untaps, draws, and his Saga gains its final chapter. In response, he daps it for mana and goes find a Jewel Lotus into play. With that, he's able to cast a Tali Primal Conqueror, 7 mana on turn 4, not bad. It resolves since no one is playing blue, and when it enters, everyone exiles the top card of their libraries. And what crazy hits! He stacks them so he casts Josh's Silence first, then balls Mirror to Mirror, which enters as a copy of its own Itali, and due to state-based actions, he puts his commander into his graveyard, and leaves it there, because just next up in the stack is a Necromancy that only targets once it enters play. But before that, he gets himself another Itali trigger. Not as good, but he still gets some mana and a Tainted Pact. He casts the Orcish Lumberjack, followed by the Codex Shredder, then Earthcraft. Finally, he goes for the Tainted Pact. He considers going all in to find Food Chain, but being tapped out, he sticks to a Wheel of Fortune, hoping to get there in the next turn cycle, as well as he has Underworld Breach at hand. Now, Necromancy finally resolves and enters play, returning his Itali from his graveyard. State-based actions resolve and he once again chooses the Mirror Itali, over his commander, that he lets in his graveyard, hoping to find some more reanimation shenanigans. Itali triggers and he finds quite some mana, some in a crypt, some with a stone, a Memnite and an Eternal Witness, that enters play and he retrieves his Itali to his hand. He proceeds to combat and his Itali mirror has haste, so he sends it towards Baal, alongside Skuz, and the construct towards Josh. Both players jump block, Baal does take 7 commander damage and Josh sacrifices Junk Diver to his high market to gain one life. Junk Diver triggers and he targets Lotus Petal, to which Elder responds by exiling it with his Kuz. Elder then passes with quite a huge board state. Alfonso gets to his turn and casts his Manglehorn right away, before some Dockside shenanigans can take place. It enters play and he targets the Construct, since Beatdown seems a valid option at the moment. Without blue mana, we thought this would be a fast combo match, but apparently not. Turn 5 and things look dire to Elder's opponents. Ball draws and casts a British Grasp, targeting Josh. He gets a source of plowshares that he uses to exile scavenging ooze in order to unlock Josh and Afonso's potential so that Elder doesn't just kill him mercilessly and now needs to be more cautious with his plays. Josh gets to his turn but can only pass, not finding those planes. Elder untaps and rolls for the crypt, taking 3 damage. With a ton of mana available to him, he just casts his Itali from hand, and there we go again. He gets the Vince Reclamation from Baal, that he targets his Urza Saga, then Joss's KCI, his own Circle of Dreams Druid and Afonso's Young Wolf. Still not that game-breaking, but his board just keeps increasing and increasing. He passes and Afonso gets to his turn, still a bit tight on mana and creatures. He only wants to cast Tyam with an OK board, so he just casts a Hunting Drowns, quite sad he has no threshold, with only 3 cards in his graveyard. We're back to Baal. He casts a Lurus, hoping to get some defenses up from the backside of Itali. With Lurus, he casts Esper Sentinel from his graveyard and passes. Josh draws, casts a Felwar Stone, triggering Sentinel and not paying. Finally, with some white mana, he casts his Tayshar, Ancestor's Apostle, and passes the turn. Elder once again loses his Crypt Roll. He draws, and his Saga gains its second ability again. He plays a Basic Forest, finally transforming all his creatures into Dorts, thanks to Earthcraft. He then transforms his Itali into Primal Sickness. Everyone has blockers, but that pesky Manglehorn stops him from trying to go nuts with Dockside, so he attacks Afonso, who is forced to block, and take only 9 poison counters. Eller then goes to his second main phase and puts an Underworld Breach on the stack. Where are you, blow players? Come back, you are forgiven! In response, though, Afonso casts a crop rotation, sacrificing his Bayou as an additional cost. He gets a Gyre Rich Sanitarian into play and still cracks his Jewel Lotus in response, achieving his way threshold for his hunting grounds. The window to trigger is long gone, of course, but whatever Elder does next, it will give him some triggers. Elder now puts his Wheel of Fortune on the stack. Hunting Ground triggers and Afonso puts a Dreadith Magistrate into play. Just two cards left for Afonso, but he might have just saved the game. Everyone draws a new 7 and Elder just found a way to deal with Dreadith. He casts a Beast Within, targeting it. 
However, as Engine Ground triggers, Afonso puts a Sylvan Safekeeper into play with it, and activates it by sacrificing Guy Rich and Ethereum. Quite sadly, Elder plays a Crystal Vein and just proceeds to his end step, sacrificing Underworld Breach without taking any advantage from it. Afonso gets to his turn, plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for an untapped Temple Garden. He then casts a Thousand Year Elixir, triggering Sentinel, but he can't pay. He then shapes it to Ball. He draws, plays an Ancient Tomb and then casts a Ranger Captain of Youths. Hunting Brown triggers and Afonso puts a Scary Oak into play. Ranger enters and he finds a Ragavan into his hand. He then discards a fetch at cleanup and passes with open mana. Josh untaps and gains one from his Inventor's Fair. He has a window to go for it, but Ranger Captain would stop him. Instead, he casts a Chromox, Trim Teshar, Hunting Grounds and Sentinel. Ball draws, Afonso puts a Bloom Tender into play and in response to Teshar trigger, Elder evokes an Endurance. Since the table is combined at Skyclave, will hit something from his board. Hunting Ground triggers, but Afonso declines to put something into play. Josh's whole graveyard is shuffled into the bottom of his library and then Josh imprints the mocks with his own Ranger Captain. He then goes ahead and cracks his Inventor's Fair, finding a grinding station, as he needs some fuel back again in his graveyard. Josh then plays a Blasting Zone and uses it to help cast Grinding Station. It enters play and triggers to untap, and he responds to it by activating it to sacrifice Hurex and Walker to mill himself three cards. He doesn't find much, so he activates Grinding Station again, sacrificing his Sol Ring and milling himself three cards again. He now finds a Phyrexian Sensor that he could bring into play, but that could be worse for him, so he just passes. In the end step, Alar uses his Hearthcraft alongside his Crystal Vein to activate Codex Shredder. He returns his Underworld Breach back to hand and proceeds to his turn. He untaps and takes no damage from the crit, draws and his Earth Sag against its final chapter. He finds his own Codex Shredder into play, for more recursion, and anti-tutors to the top. He plays his Calling Tarn and jumps into combat. Play removal also counts as Drenith removal, so his Etali turns sideways towards Afonso, who just declared no blockers, expecting his demise. However, Ball casts a Saw in Half, targeting Etali. This confuses some players, but Ball prefers that Drenith stays in play, to prevent Elder's Underworld Breach while knowing that Afonso can bypass anything they might throw at him. It gains the table at least one turn cycle, where Ranger Captain still stops Josh and Elder. Two small Etali's Primal Signals hit play and one is put into Elder's graveyard as state-based actions. Elder sadly goes to his second main phase and just casts a Wild Growth on his basic force, so all his dark creatures tap for two, thanks to Earthcraft. Afonso untaps, draws, plays a Phyrexian Tower and casts his commander, Tyam Luminous Enigma. When it enters play, Scary Oak triggers to evolve, in turn creating a Squirrel token that enters play with a Vigilance counter on it. After that, Afonso passes. Ball plays a Spectator Sitting and then casts a Talisman of Hierarchy. He then casts a Hope of Girapur and follows that with a Ragavan, hoping to put quite some defenses, in case Elder changes his mind on who to attack. He's a bit like that sometimes. Josh gets to his turn, plays his Snow Covered Plains and politics starts to flood the table. He's divided if he should go for it and make Ball crack the Ranger, or play conservatively and try to find answers for Tyam, which is almost impossible. Eventually casts a Workshop Assistance, triggering Teshar targeting Fire Exit Walker, which enters play first, triggering Random Station to untap, and Josh responds to it by tapping it and sacrificing the Walker to it, to mill himself three cards. He doesn't find much, so he eventually taps out for a Rug of Smothering, triggering Teshar and targeting Fire Exit Sensor. While the latter numbers the Rug, having both in play gives him more security in case Elder decides to go off storming with Breach. Speaking about Elder, we're in his upkeep and he takes three from the crypt. He jumps into combat and sends Itali once again towards Afonso. He has 9 poison counters, so he puts Tyam and Drenith in front of the dinosaur in order to survive. In his second main phase, Elder surprises the table with a single Utopia Sprawl on his already enchanted forest. He loses one life to the rug and while his opponents are surprised, they don't even know he's planning a huge finale of devastation, and that Earthcraft is going to help on it. Back to Afonso, he plays a Misty Rainforest and cracks it for a forest. He then recasts his commander, Tyam, losing one life to the rug. It enters play tapped and triggers Curry Oak again to evolve, which in turn creates another squirrel that enters play with a Vigilance counter. Suddenly, he is full of counters to start doing some Tyam activations. He uses Thousand Year Elixir to untap Bloom Tender and passes with mana for Tyam. Let's play non blue decks, they said. It will be fast, they said. Well, Balkas, Timna, losing one life to the rug, and this is his spell for the turn. He attacks Elder with Hope of Girapur. Timna then triggers and he pays one life to draw a card, ending his turn. Josh draws, plays his Snow Covered Plains and then casts a Thalia Guardian of Thraban, triggering the Rug and Teshar and he returns Ornithopter to play, slowly trying to grow his board state. Thopter enters play and triggers Grinding Station to untap, to which he responds by activating it, milling himself for 3. 
He passes, and on his end step, Eller cracks his calling tower and finds a Taiga into play. He still cracks his codex to bring his finale of devastation back to his hand as well. Everyone is okay with that, not expecting his master plan. He untaps and takes no damage from the crypt. He plays a command tower and starts counting his mana. Eventually, they realize he wants to do a huge finale of devastation to kill the table, but he is short on evasive creatures, with just a single trampling its alley. 10 minutes later. After a huge political moment, they convince Elder that he should use his political bullet, Finale, to at least kill two players, so he eventually casts his other Itali from the command zone. Rogos smothering triggers and then Itali enters play but all the four cards revealed are uncastable due to Phyrexian sensor, so he just proceeds to combat. The top side of the table wants Afonso dead, but Afonso convinces Elder that he will activate Tyam at the beginning of combat, so he can see what he's about and then he can choose who to attack. He mills 3 and returns Necromancy back to play, which in turn returns Luminous Broodmoth to play with a Vigilance counter, as well as evolving Scurry Oak, which creates another Squirrel token with a Vigilance counter. Elder still attacks him with a 6 6 0 infected Tali, forcing Afonso to block with Scurry Oak and the two Squirrels. Due to Luminous Broodmoth, Scurry Oak returns to play with a Flying and Vigilance counter. Sticky dudes, these ones. Afonso gets to his turn and casts a Tyvar Jubilant Brawler, which is basically another Thousand Year Elixir as well as untaps Bloom Tender for another activation. Sentinel and the Rug both trigger and Afonso doesn't pay for it. He then goes into combat and sends Luminous Broadmouth towards Elder. On his second main phase, he taps Bloom Tender for mana and uses Tyvar's plus 1 ability to untap Bloom Tender. With those 3 ups and mana, he activates Tyam, building a wall of roots that he brings into play. It enters with a Vigilance Counter and Scurry Oak evolves, creating a Squirrel token with Vigilance Counter and suddenly his engine is almost online. Just needs to find a sack outlet. He adds one green mana with Wall of Roots just to have another counter available, and just passes. Into end step, Bell flashes in an opposition agent and proceeds to his turn. He draws, plays a Polluted Delta, and eventually he and Josh agree to attack with Regavan and Josh doesn't block, hoping Bell can draw from Timna and find something from Josh's side to deal with Afonso. And so it is. However, the Regavan hits a mere Conjurer's Bobble. Their options are not the best, so Bell casts a Wishclaw Talisman, hoping they can all cooperate to slow down Afonso. However, Afonso responds by activating Tyam. He mills three cards and returns Manglehorn back to play, triggering and targeting Josh's grinding station. In response to it, Josh activates it, sacrificing itself to milling three cards. Bal's plans went down the drain, so he passes. In the end step, Afonso adds green with his wall of roots, and Josh activates High Market, sacrificing Workshop Assistant and returning grinding station back to his hand. He still adds one counter to his blasting station before proceeding to his turn. He starts by casting his grinding station, triggering the rug and Teshar, and targeting his workshop assistant, and sending out triggers as well, which he doesn't pay for. The assistant enters tapped and grinding station as well, but he triggers to untap from its own ETB. After some consideration, he sacrifices Firex and Sensor with a high marker to unlock himself and puts a grand abolisher on the stack. He loses 2 life to his own rug and then, in response, Afonso generates 1 green mana with Wall of Roots and 3 absent mana with Bloom Tender to activate Tyam once. He holds priority and sacrifices Bloom Tender with Firex and Tower for double black mana, which we enter play thanks to Luminous Broodmoth, with a flying and vigilance counter. Three mana floating and the Tayam activation is now resolved. He doesn't find much, but brings Nature Chosen enchanting Luminous Broodmoth. He now taps Bloom Tender again for another Tayam activation, removing three counters from its creatures, and holding priority taps his Luminous Broodmoth to untap his Bloom Tender and tap it again for another Tayam activation, removing three more counters from his creatures. He mills two lands and Archon of Emeria, but returns Armored Scrap Gorgeous to play with a Vigilance counter, triggering Scary Oak's Evolve ability, which creates another Squirrel token that also enters with a Vigilance counter. He then taps Scrap Gorgeous for mana, triggering an Exiling Boss of Inch Reclamation. He activates Tyam again and finds a Plague Crafter that he chooses to bring back, entering play with a Vigilance counter, and triggering to Sacrifice as well as Scary Oak that evolves, creating another Squirrel token with a Vigilance counter. He holds priority on the Sacrifice trigger and removes 3 more counters and uses 3 from the 4 mana he had floating to activate Tyam again. And he found Ashna's altar. However, he brings Promise of Bunray back to play just to be safe. Playcrafter's trigger now resolves and everyone sacrifices a creature. This triggers his own Promise of Bunray to be sacrificed, and he creates 4 1 1 colorless spirit creature tokens that all enter play with the Vigilance counter. And Bloom Tender, whose flying counter keeps being removed for Tyam activations, returns once again thanks to Broodmoth. He now activates Tyam once again and returns Ashnod's Altar to play. This way, he can demonstrate infinite Tyam activations by adding mana with Bloom Tender and Ashnod's Altar, and sacrificing Bloom Tender and any of his spirits to keep having mana. Amidst the Tyam activations, he brings Promise of Bunray to create 4 more tokens each time he is running out of counters, since any creature he sacrifices triggers it, and he creates 4 tokens all with Vigilance counters. 
when Simulus himself completely unreal access to infinite mana and time activations, he recurs Archish Bowl Masters that enters play and pings any of his opponents. He sacrifices it to the altar and repeats it over and over. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone. What a crazy match. No blue for counters, but a lot of stacks and interaction. Scavenging Ooze keeping Josh and Tyam in check meant Baal was the main target for Elder, which led Baal to remove it, so the other decks could be such threats as well. Hunting Grounds pulled Afonso back to the game, and while Josh had some windows with infinite loops on the table, Ranger Captain came in time to slow him down. Baal saving Afonso was something he knew it could fire back, but once Afonso was gone, Baal would have one more turn, and this way he gained 3 turns. Sylvan Safekeeper, while never used, prevented Elder and Baal from removing Afonso's key creatures, and eventually timed in its unstoppable thing. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, Arajimo, Dragon House Cat, Pina, Ricardo, and Zinan, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!